Today we'll be discussing long vertical spreads and how to trade them within the Thinkorswim web app. We're going to start by learning what they are, how they work, and we'll also learn how to manage them throughout the life of the trade. Now just as a quick reminder, I will be using the web-based version of Thinkorswim, so if your platform looks a little bit different than this one, you're probably on the desktop site. In order to access this one, you just need to head to the website trade.thinkorswim.com and then go ahead and log in with the exact same user ID and password that you normally use. But like I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to be learning about long vertical spreads, which is the simultaneous buying and selling of different options contracts at different strikes, but on the exact same expiration. We're going to use them to bet on the direction of the stock, just like a long call or put, but unlike a single long call or put, we're going to have less risk, but also less potential profit. This is going to all make a lot more sense in a few minutes once we do a couple different examples, but for now we need to begin by pulling up an option chain. In order to find that, we'll come up here to the search box at the very top of our screen and then go ahead and type in the symbol of the stock that we want to trade, in this case Amazon. From there, we can then find the option chain down here below, and by clicking on the little arrow on the left-hand side, we can see a list of the available expirations. On the far left-hand side, we can actually see the expiration dates themselves, beginning here at the January 27th of 2023 expiration, and going all the way out to the June 20th of 2025. Just the right of those expiration dates, we can also see the number of days until expiration, right in here in parentheses, then over here on the far right hand side, we can also see the implied volatility for that expiration. If we were to come back up and actually open up one of these expiration dates, in this case February 10th, that will then allow us to see a few of the available strikes right here in the center, beginning here at the 94 strike and going out to the 99. If you ever wanted to expand that list out even further to see even further out of the money, we could either hit the more buttons on either side, or we could come up here to the strikes menu in the upper right hand corner where it currently says strike six. And by opening up that menu, you can then toggle to the number of strikes that you wanted to see. In this case, we're selecting 12. If we now come back over here to the strikes menu and scroll down just a little bit, we can now see a few more strikes have been added beginning here at 91 and going out to 102. If you were to look to the left of that strikes column, you're gonna find all the call options whereas to the right, you're gonna find all the put options. Coming back up and looking at the very top of our screen, we can also see some info columns up here, just telling us what data is being displayed down below. In this case, we're seeing the volume, the open interest, the delta, probability in the money, and the current bid ask of those options, essentially just the current price. Now, when the time comes to place the actual trades themselves, you will simply be clicking on the asking price whenever you wanna buy, and the bid price whenever you want to sell. Since we're going to be creating a long vertical spread, we're going to need to begin by buying an option. Whether we choose to buy a call or a put is going to depend on whether we are bullish or bearish on the underlying stock. So if we're bullish, we're going to buy a call. If we're bearish, we're going to buy a put. Now, just for example's sake, let's say we were bullish on Amazon and think it's headed up. In that case, I'm going to need to begin by buying a call option. And for now, if I were to look at all the available strikes, Let's just say I wanted to buy one slightly in the money. So in this case, let's say I was looking at the 95 strike calls. Coming to the left, I can see that call option is currently trading for 580 by 585. To buy it, I'm just going to click on the current asking price of now $5.90. And as soon as I do that, you can see an order ticket is built out down here below to buy that call option. So right here again, it says I'm buying one of the February 10th. $95 calls, and if I look over here on the far right, I'd be paying $5.90 per contract, or $590. Now, if that was all I was doing, all I was doing was buying a long call option, that amount that I'm paying would also be the max risk on this trade. So in this case, I would be risking $590. In terms of the profit potential, technically, I'm going to have undefined max profit, since theoretically, there's no limit to how high the price of Amazon could go. The more Amazon goes up, the more money that I'm going to make on this trade. However, if I was willing to put a limit on that potential profit, I was willing to give up a little bit of my profit potential, I could choose to sell a further out of the money call, and by doing that, reduce the risk on the trade as well. So again, by selling the further out of the money call, we're going to limit our potential profit, 
but we're also going to reduce the cost of the trade, which in turn reduces the risk. So just as an example, if I were to come back up here to the option chain, let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. In this case, if I wanted to sell a five point further out of the money call, that would be the 100 strike call. And looking over here to the left, I can see it's currently trading for 340 by 345. And remember, in this case, I would be selling it. So I'd be selling it for the bid price of 340. And if I click on that, I'm now going to be reducing the risk on this trade by the credit received. So I'm reducing the risk by $340. Coming down here below, you can even see the order ticket now identifies this trade as a long vertical spread. It says I'm buying one vertical. Below, it says I'm buying one of the $95 calls and I'm selling one of the $100 calls. You can also see the debit amount down here. The amount that I'm going to be paying for this trade has now been reduced by the credit automatically. I've reduced the risk by $340. So now instead of having to pay $5.90, I only have to pay $2.40. And now my risk has been reduced by that amount. So now in the worst case scenario, the absolute most I could ever lose on this trade is going to be 240 bucks. But the downside is that I've also capped out my potential profit on the trade as well. I've essentially said that even if Amazon goes above 100, it doesn't matter for me because I've capped out my potential profit right here where I sold the call option. So now in order to calculate the max profit on this trade, I've got to take the width of the spread, so $100. Minus 95, that's going to be the width of $5. Then I need to subtract out the amount that I paid for it. And if we come back down here, let's just keep things simple and say I paid $2.40 for this thing. Now the most I'm ever going to be able to make on this trade is going to be the width of $5 minus the debit paid. So the most I can ever make is 5 minus 240 or 260 bucks. I could of course adjust this price to whatever I wanted. I could put in any amount in here, but if I put it in any lower than the current mid price or the current asking price for the trade, I can pretty much guarantee that I'm not going to fill on it, but I could always try. So in this case, let's say I didn't want to pay any more than, let's just say $2 for this vertical spread. I'm going to throw in two bucks here. And now because I've done that, I've also reduced the risk and increased the max profit if this trade actually fills because now the max risk on this trade is going to be $2 or $200, and the max profit is going to be $3 or $300. In order to actually place this, I'll just come down here below and hit review, then hit send one more time to actually place it. Once placed, in order to check on it, I could just scroll down this screen just a little bit, and then find my working order right here in the trade section. I could also check on it by coming over here to the positions page, then coming to the right and opening up the activity tab where I can now see all of my open and working orders in this account right now. So at the moment, I do have an open order to buy that one vertical spread on Amazon for two bucks. And since it's currently trading for 242, I have not bought it yet. This order has not filled. If I wanted to edit or cancel this order, I could come over here to the far left hand side and just hit this little check mark box. Then looking down below at the bottom of my screen, I could either hit cancel selected to just outright cancel it or hit edit to edit it in some way. In my case, I do want to edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit edit selected here. Since I want to get a fill immediately, I'm just going to come up here and flip this over to a market order, which I would never recommend you do on an option contract and especially a spread. But for right now, since I want to fill, we're going to set it to market. Then I'm going to come down here and hit review and then send. Now that it's been placed as a market order, that order has filled immediately. And now I can see the position right up here above in the trade section or by coming back here to the positions page. And now because it is filled, I can see it over here in my position section. And if I hit the little arrow to the left, we can see my current position on Amazon. In order to close that out, I simply need to click on the spread itself. So just go ahead and click on vertical here. It'll then take me directly back to the trade section where we can again see the position right down here below. And at the moment, you can see all the legs are selected, both the long call as well as the short call. And since they're both check marked, if I wanted to close out of the entire vertical, I could come down here below and hit close selected. That will then build out an order ticket to close out of the entire vertical spread automatically. So right here, it's saying I'm gonna sell that one vertical spread. That's going to be done by selling one of the 95s and buying back one of the 100s. So again, this is what it's going to do to automatically close out the vertical. 
I could also come over to the far right and set the price at which I wanted to sell for. And ideally, I want to sell for more than I bought it for to make a profit. For me personally, I usually like to set about a 50% profit target on my spreads. So in this case, I'm going to set the profit to, let's say, $3.60. So now I'm essentially saying I only want to sell this vertical if I can get $3.60 or more for it. Since that's pretty unlikely to happen today, because Amazon would have to have a pretty decent size move up for that to happen, I'm going to come over here to the right and flip this over from a day order to a GTC order. So now I'm saying put this order out every single day until it hits 360, and if it ever does, go ahead and sell it for me automatically. In order to place that, I'll just come down here below and hit review and hit send. But again, that'll be the basics of how to place a vertical spread within here. And now that you know how to create a long vertical spread, let's cover some of the best practices. How to pick your expiration dates, how to pick the right strike prices, and then when to close out of a trade. If we begin first with the expiration, I personally feel that you have far more flexibility in picking your expiration as compared to a short vertical spread. You'll generally have a reason for believing the underlying stock is going to move in one direction or the other, so the date that you pick will really depend on the time you need for it to play out. Just remember, the further out in time you go, the more premium that you will end up paying. However, you're also going to be less affected by things like time decay the further out you go. Really, the expiration date you choose is entirely up to you, but just try and keep all of this in mind. Now, once you have decided on the expiration, finding the right strike prices to buy or sell will be the next task. This is really going to depend on what you're trying to do. The further out of the money you go, the less you'll pay, and the more leverage you'll get. These are also going to be far less likely to end up expiring in the money in comparison to had you bought an in-the-money option spread instead. What I'd really recommend is that you practice in a few different time frames and using a few different strike prices and just test it in paper money and decide for yourself which one makes the most sense for you. When it comes time to closing the spread, I'd also have a predefined profit target and loss to find before you even enter the trade. I'm generally going to exit all my spreads when they hit about 50% profit, but sometimes I do like to hold a bit longer and try to grab about 75% of the potential profit. Rarely, if ever, will I ever hold beyond that, since at a certain point, it just doesn't make sense to tie up all that capital for so little in return. Now, as for stopping out when things go against me, I don't generally have a stop price in mind, since the risk is defined at the amount that I pay, most of the time I'm willing to hold on to it, and I'm only going to exit if I decide I no longer think it's going in the way I thought. You might also hear others recommend stopping out at about 50% loss, but really this is up to you to decide for yourself. Also, when it comes to rolling, I generally have no reason to roll a long vertical spread. I do tend to roll my short options when things go against me, but rolling a long vertical would really just be throwing more money into the trade for more time, and I don't really like to do that. The more money I put on it, the more risk I'm putting on the trade overall, and now that just doesn't make sense to me. But with those best practices in mind, even though they are pretty flexible, let's go ahead and build out another long vertical as an example. Using the search box up here at the top, let's go ahead and throw in Alibaba, or B-A-B-A, -A, Baba for short. I can then come down here below and open up the option chain by hitting the little arrow on the left-hand side. In this example, I want to get a spread with a little bit more volatility in it, and I think the move is going to happen relatively soon. So I'm going to pick an expiration about two weeks out in time, so in this case, February 10th. Looking at the strikes below, let's also assume that I was bearish on Alibaba. I thought it was going to go down in value. Since I am bearish, I'm going to be looking at buying a put spread, and I'll be looking at buying a put slightly in the money. So in this case, that would be the 120 strike put, which looking over here on the right, I can see is trading for $5 by $5.20. In order to buy that, I'm going to start by clicking on the asking price of 520 you can then see it gets added to the order ticket down here below to just outright buy one of the 120 puts. And again, I'm going to be paying $5.20, so the max risk on this trade is going to be $520. I'm now going to want to sell an even further out of the money put in order to reduce some of this risk. And in this case, let's say I'm willing to cap out my potential profit at $115. I don't think Baba is going to move much below that price between now and then. So in this case, I'm going to be looking at the 115 put, and it's trading for 280 by 295. And in order to sell that put, I'm going to click on the bid price of 280. 
You can then see it does build out the order ticket down here below to buy one vertical spread. And I'm gonna be buying one of the 120 puts, selling one of the 115 puts. It looks like the max risk on this trade is gonna be $2.23, so that's gonna be the debit paid. And that's also gonna be the amount of option buying power I'll need to buy this vertical. But besides just buying the spread, let's also say I wanted to automatically put out my profit target as soon as this opening trade fills. Now be sure to check out this video to learn more about advanced orders because I don't want to spend too much time on it. But in order to create that advanced order, I need to look at the line down here below. The one that I'm going to be clicking on is the one that says contingent order. And as soon as I clicked on that, you'll see another order gets added below the first. And this is going to be our closing ticket. You'll also notice a little button in the center of these two orders, and this is a linking button specifying how we want these orders to be submitted. In this case, with the then button selected, I'm saying that I want this first order to fill, and then once it fills, I want this order to go out there. Now with this one down here below being my profit taking order or my closing order, I'm gonna come down here below and set the profit target to 50% of the potential profit. So in this case, that would be setting my profit target at $3.37. We'll go ahead and throw that in there. And since this is not likely to happen today, I'm going to come over here and mark this as a GTC order, saying I want this one to go out every single day until it fills. And now to place it, we'll just come down here below and hit review, and then hit send. Once placed, I could always check on it by coming back up here to the positions page. Then coming to the right in the activity section, we can see that open order to buy that vertical put spread on Alibaba. Right here is the open order to buy it at 225. And then if that fills, it's going to trigger this order to go out there to sell it for 337. But really, that's going to cover just about everything you need to know on how to trade vertical spreads within here. Hopefully, you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with the TOS website and how to buy vertical spreads within here. I know it was a lot to cover, and I covered a lot of it only briefly. So if you are looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you all in the next one.